So please, everyone, remember to always drive safely. And never drive if you've been drinking. This is Arthur Carlson speaking. Thank you. <laughs> and that was another controversial message from station manager Arthur Carlson here at WKRP. And if you'd like to rebut safe driving, please write and care of this station. <laughs> How you doing, Cora? Can I talk? Sure. Yeah. Should I whisper? No, no, I got a record plan. Oh, good. Sit down. Thank you. How about I uh, sneak in a little Ella for you tonight, huh? That'd be nice. Bella? Hello, Bella? Either one. You got it. Uh, Venus, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Are you a high school graduate? <laughs> college graduate. Carlisle State Teachers College. What would you have done if you hadn't finished school? Oh, I don't know. You sure don't need to be a college graduate to do this job. Yeah. What's wrong, Carl? You look a little down tonight. Yeah, I guess I do. Oh, Venus. I got trouble at home. What's wrong, Carl? My little boy, Arnold. He's just 16, and now he's telling me he says he's going to quit school. Somebody like you, a, a person who's made something of him. Well, you send him to talk to him. Oh, Phoenix, would you? Sure. Well, what time should I? Time. I don't know. Clock tomorrow. I'll make sure he's here. And thank you so much, Venus. No problem. Well, I guess I better be getting back to work. Okay. He's just a big dumb fool. That's all he is. Just a big dumb fool. Yeah. <laughs> How big? <laughs> Your height. You're kind of skinny like me, huh? <laughs> no, uh-uh. He, uh, he looks like, you know, a, a regular man. A regular man at 16? Uh-huh. He's bad, too. Real bad. Uh, how you mean bad? You mean like he's a bad little boy or that cat's bad? <laughs> no. You know, bad. Right. But watch out, he can be real tricky. Oh, tricky, huh? <laughs> Big tricky. And bad. Bad. <laughs> Big tricky and bad. Well, thank you, Venus. Thank you so much. Hey, no problem. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> hey, no problem at all. I can't help. <laughs> I'm from the streets. I'm used to hammering. Big, bad, tricky men. <laughs> If you've ever wondered, wondered whatever became of me, I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati WKRP. Got kind of tired of packing and unpacking, from town to town, up and down. in a while I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati What time do you have? Oh, I'm not wearing my watch today. Oh. What time do you have? 4.50. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Arnold? 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm Venus Flytrap. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Venus. Hi. Uh, uh, um. Uh. Jennifer. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 Jennifer. Uh, 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 I, 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 I've read through these papers just like you asked. Mr. Carlson, you were supposed to sign them, not read them. Oh. Okay. Th thank you. Uh, how's it going, Venus? Fine, I see you. Oh, it's awfully busy. It just it never seems to stop. Sir. Ah, well, I, don't know. I didn't know you were going to bring all your friends down with you. I didn't know I was going to have to come up here either. Well, nobody forced you to. That's right. You want to have your buddies wait for you downstairs? <laughs> I'll be down in about five minutes. Let's go back here. Okay. Signed. Your name? <laughs> yeah. Ah, let's see, where can we talk here? Don't you have your own office? Uh, no, I don't, Arnold. Yes, uh, Arnold, this is Miss Bailey Quarters. Bailey, this is Arnold. Well, hello, Hi. Arnold. Wow, Venus told me all about you. I know that sometimes it may not seem like it's worth the effort, but I think that uh, school pays off in the long run, <laughs> no matter what you decide to do later on. <clears throat> of course, I could be wrong. <laughs> and I probably am. <laughs> Thank you, Bailey. Uh, you're welcome, Venus. Well, I just guess I'll gather up my work here and blow out of here so you two can just talk by yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, let's go over here, all right? You want to sit down? No. I don't think so. You're a real tough guy, aren't you? Real bad dude, right? Well, 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 what have we here? Oh, no. Hi, I'm Les Nestman, senior news director. You must be Arnold Isley. I know your mother very well. Welcome to WKRP, and feel free to ask any questions. All this is not as complicated as it looks. Thank you, Les, but Arnold, I wonder if we could talk privately. Certainly, I'll just uh, step into my office and shut my door. <laughs> Alas, we were hoping uh, we may have to use your office, too. Oh, certainly. I understand. What's he on? Ovaltine. <laughs> Gentlemen are black. <laughs> oh, God. I've recently taken quite an interest in Negro culture. Is that right? Les, you um, may not know this, Arnold, Les. but most of the few truly original has made to society from black Americans. Now, I personally. But here in the U.S., it is And why? <laughs> Black input, Arnold, that's why. Les, look, I was... Then, of course, I have music. It's not my favorite subject, but it's one I can articulate. Beatles are the construct of modern music. And I use that word construct incorrectly. Surely they were given birth to by Elvis Presley, a giant for sure, but the product of the black experience. Ergo, and I use that word correctly, <laughs> blacks created modern music. Scratch an almond brother, and you have black. <laughs> Scratch Billy Joel, and you have howling wolf. <laughs> I could go on, but my mother is in town. 
Let's just say that every white rock and roll musician working today should take half of his or her paycheck and mail it directly to Chuck Berry. <laughs> At least that's what I think. And I won't even go into jazz. Arnold, enjoy your visit to the station. Venus, nice visiting with you too. <laughs> Right on, Did you let... tell them all that? Uh, no. No. I. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Uh, that's uh, Fever. He uh, hates his apartment, so he sleeps around the station. That's Dr. Fever? Yeah. He don't look like his voice. <laughs> you don't either. I don't? No. You sound white to me. You know, Arnold, I really don't care what you think about me. I'm just trying to help your mother. Yeah? And how are you gonna do that? You know, I've seen your type before. You're gonna be a big loser, man. Life's gonna run you over like a giant steamroller. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'll tell you what. Here's a uh, hundred dollars. Won't you go out and buy yourself a new jacket? That's how life's running me over. Why don't you give that money to your mother? I try. I can't. She, she won't take it. Do you love your mama? Yeah, I love my mama. Well, give me 30 minutes, man. We'll go somewhere else and we'll talk. Just you and me, one on one. What do you say? OK. Why not? I'm here, ain't I? <laughs> Hi, brothers. <laughs> How a bunga, Uncle Bob. Where's that $100 bill I lost yesterday? I thought it was gone. I looked all over the place for it. <laughs> this is strange. Life itself is strange. Mm. <laughs> Donation. Uh, let's go on. Girls, these editorials of yours, I mean, they're, uh, they're good. I mean, they're darn good. Now, I'm not saying that they're not. And, uh, Miss Bailey, not for a minute. Not for a minute. I'm not neither is Annie, Miss Crawford. Oh, no, sir. Now, now, what we are saying is that sometimes your editorials are just a little bit, uh, mild. You can't have a hot item all the time. I know that. But, sir, since you've been doing this now, you've come out in favor of, uh, good roads, better education, and, uh, spring. <laughs> came out in favor of spring, Mr. Carroll. What's wrong with spring? I like spring. Can't I talk about the seasons? I mean, why does everything have to be so negative today? Well, it's a downtime, Mr. Carlson. Now, just listen to me for just one second. Oh, I'm sorry, and I didn't know. Uh, we'll go do it in the storeroom, right? Look, I just want to get this over. Come on. Where'd you get the hundred dollar bill? On the street. Rolling drunk, selling drugs? <laughs> no, nah, man, you got me all wrong. Yeah, you are a member of a gang, though. No, nah, it's a, uh, a social club, you know what I mean? A gentleman's club. Yeah, and you're the president of this gentleman's club. That's right. That means you're the strongest and the smartest. Yeah, I guess so. You're strong and you're smart. I just want to verify that. Yeah, I'm strong and I'm smart. Good, I'm not surprised. So why do you want to drop out of school? Wasting my time. Maybe. The main reason is you don't like it, do you? Yeah, I guess so. How come? Because it's wasting my time. No. You don't like school because you look like a dummy in there. What are you talking about? You look like an idiot in class. A what? An idiot. Look out now. Hey, I'm looking out. I'm looking out. <laughs> and I see a smart guy who isn't so smart when a teacher asks him a question. It's embarrassing, ain't it? I wouldn't know. Yeah, you would. There ain't nobody like to do anything to make them look dumb, and school makes you look dumb. I run that school, my man. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm not saying you don't, but you don't look good in class, and you don't like it, do you? You saying I'm dumb? No. I'm saying you ain't strong. You want to see just how strong I am, you keep on talking. Do you know what strong is? What? Strong is not caring what anybody think about you. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I don't care what anybody thinks. Especially you. What if you start paying attention in class instead of being cool and causing a lot of trouble? 
How would your friends react to that? Huh? What would your lieutenants think about that? Doesn't matter, because I ain't going to do it. But could you do it? Could you be that strong? Yeah, I could be that strong. You're a very special man, huh? Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Too bad you're dumb. Start that again. You got to stand up and say, hey, I don't understand. Repeat that again. And they get tired of repeating that and then put you in a special class, like, and call it remedial, just to embarrass you. You got to tell them you don't give a damn what they call it, that you're too strong to be embarrassed and you want what's coming to you. Why do I want it, huh? I mean, what good is an education for like me? And don't have the money either, because the unemployment line has people education. College degrees. I mean, there's, there's. So what's the point of going back to school? You want to know what I think, man? I think there are only two things anybody cares about in this world: one, survival; two, conquest. What about sex? That's part of survival. <laughs> <laughs> and so is an education, man. You've got to have an education to survive. Now, I'm not going to tell you that because you've heard that a hundred times before. I won't bore you with that. Good. No, I'm not going to bore you with that because a dude like you's not into survival. No, you're into conquests. You conquer out there in the street and you like that. You get conquered in the classroom and you don't like it, do you? No. Have you conquered math, man, or has math conquered you? Who's the toughest dog in that fight, you or math? Math. How come? How come? Yeah. I don't know. Well, tell me, what do you think it is? I don't know. Well, do you pay attention in class? No. Well, what is it, man? I'm asking you, Arnold. Maybe it's because I'm dumb. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Don't be telling me I'm not dumb. I'm telling you, I'm dumb. <laughs> Arnold, you're smart. You're the president of your gang. It's different. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. In school, they got geometry and, and English and biology. And, and I just don't understand a thing about it, man. I just don't get any of it. Well, what about chemistry? That's the hardest one. Did they teach you anything about the atom? The atom? Year after year. And I don't know the first thing about it. I can give you the basic of the atom in two minutes. You'll understand it perfectly and remember it for months. <laughs> two minutes? You're crazy, you know that? If I can teach you about the atom in two minutes, will you go back to school and finish out the year? How about it, huh? Come on, you're a betting man. How about it, Arnold? Yeah. Yeah, OK, sure, you got it. I got your word? Yeah, you got my word. And two minutes. We got a deal. Yeah, we got a deal. All right, sit down. OK. OK. There are three gangs on the street, right? Yeah, yeah, three gangs. And this, this right here is the territory. Now, here is the neighborhood. Got that? Yeah. And right in the middle of this neighborhood is a gang called the New Boys. Yeah, the New Boys. Good name. Okay. Out here on the outside of the neighborhood, on the edge of the neighborhood, is another gang. You know, these are real negative dudes, really negative, right? Right, right. Now, they call themselves the elected ones. All right, the elected ones. You got that? Really negative. They don't like nothing. Right. Now, they all the time out here circling around the neighborhood, just circling, you know? <laughs> Checking out the new boys. Now, the new boys see this. And they get, you know, they figure there's something wrong here, so they make a deal with another, another gang. A gang of very happy-go-lucky guys. They call themselves the pros. <laughs> yeah, you see, they got all the good-looking women. Yeah. Right. <laughs> see, now the pros and the, and the elected ones, the interesting thing, they hate each other. So much so that they keep the same number of members in the gang. Just in case, you dig? Right. So if I got 10 elected ones, how many pros do I have? Gangs do I? 